Brothers and sisters in Christ, it's your brother Philip Ness Thomas coming at you. Got to do a video tonight about uh, something I see very rampant in uh, amongst believers. Um, you know, Paul talks about how we need to expose heresies and stuff like that, and it seems like God's just dropped a bomb on me, and so. You know, in the humblest way I can come, I just come and expose heresies. And, you know, heresy is like, uh, they're like cancers, they're like diseases. It's like, uh, you know, you know, when we have them, we need, like, immediate surgery. Because, you know, they can be really terminal uh, in a lot of ways. Um, you know, they can be like a terminal illness. So, you know, and I mean, Paul talks about some save with compassion and some pull out of the fire. You know, hating the spotted garment. And, you know, I remember praying a while ago. I was I was the type of guy my whole life that I saved with compassion. You know, I led a few of my buddies to the Lord over extended periods of time. And, you know, they're not uh, totally following the Lord right now. But, uh, you know, as God requires more from my life and refines my character to walk in His name, in His character, um, you know, I know that they're going to see Christ in my life truly when, you know, um, and I pray that it's before uh, the final day when God calls in all the bets on us, you know, uh, and even before, uh, you know, and if, if the possibility that I'm dying beforehand, because Satan's always trying to steal, kill, and destroy, right? So, you know, I have a buddy at work one time, and I was sharing with him the gospel message that God had been showing to me in my heart about, you know, like uh, forsaking all and giving up your life, and he was like, oh man, you know, you're sharing about all these end time things and stuff God's showing you, and it's like you know it's awesome. We got you on our task force here. You know, we got we, we got our own little uh, safety net. You know, and I looked at him right in the face and I said, Greg, look at me, man. I said, dude, if you hear the gospel message, you need to fall on your face and repent before the Lord because you could get hit by a bus tonight or something. You know, or someone could like careen off the road and make you flip your, your truck and you'd be dead and then you'd be instantly you're transported to hell you know and I said I was raised and indoctrinated to believe that God wasn't as just and as wrathful as he is yeah you know we are living in days of grace because God poured out his wrath upon himself uh, in the form of his, his, his flesh and word his spirit was in the body of Christ you know and um, that's that's the that all this time that we have, every morning we get up, you know, we have another opportunity to be found in His righteousness, you know, and, and to be in the right way that God calls us to be in, which is clearly spelled out in His Word, you know, and if we don't have understanding, there's more time to cry out for grace, there's more time to cry out for understanding. But anyway, the main topic I want to get at, obviously, going off on these rants, um, is, you know, I hear people talking about how we're not supposed to follow the law, you know, and, and, and um, you know, that God's love does not include rebuke, chastisement, affliction, um, uh, judgments, not eternal judgment, but judgments, like the prophets brought, like the apostles brought, and, and uh, you know, there's some clarification that needs to happen in these issues, you know, like, I agree with people, like, there's things of the law that Christ made clear to us that um, are not necessary anymore, like meats, they're, un they're clean, um, like foods in general. Uh, Sabbaths and new moons, he was talking to the Jews who were being legalistic and saying, you have to follow these festivals, which is the new moons, and the Sabbath. And, and Christ said, no, I didn't, I didn't make the Sabbath, uh, I made the Sabbath for man, not the man for the Sabbath. You know, like, every day is the Sabbath. We should keep it holy. We should be walking with holy hands and in God's holy character every day. That is, that means to walk in His name. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, and then, you know, there's some other areas like tithing. You know, like, uh, Hetgal just put out a video. I watched his. You should watch that video uh, if you get a chance. H-E-T-G-O-W about some of these pitfalls. And, and there, I know that there's zealous Christians out there who are doing the same thing they did in Paul's day who are actually giving a bad name for those of us who do see that we need to follow after the law but by grace um, not by legalism um, and and they're saying oh you know we gotta we gotta nail it down to cross our T's and dot our I's and that's not what God wants yes we should fear God but 
you know, there's certain laws that we need to still obey that are outside the commandments. Like I, God said not to get tattoos. I mean, Christians, we can debate this, but you know what? Like, God said not to make graven images. He, you know, so what are we doing when we put an image on our arm or something like that? Look, you know, this is, this is, this is, or sorry, wrong shoulder. This is what I got, you know, in rebellion years ago, Superman tattoo, you know, and I'm, I'm not proud of it, and I tried to make it more appealing and say God puts the super in this man and all this, you know, stuff, divinations and imaginations of my own heart, but, you know, I was wrong, and, and, and I, have to, I have to be accountable for that before God on Judgment Day, but I'm justified now because I've repented, and, and yet, you know, like, uh, like homosexuality, you know, if we say that tattoos are okay, then homosexuality is okay. You know, it, it, we can't pick and choose. God's law, the Old Testament right through to the New, is it, it's, it's, it's a symmetrical. It, it's a mirror image of it. But the problem is, you know why most people, and I think most people would admit this in the Old Testament, they can't understand it because they don't have true revelation of the Spirit. And I, I'll, be, I'll be the first one to admit, I was that guy. Like, I, I, I read the Old Testament, and I'd be, you know, I'd fall asleep. You know what I mean? Because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't understand. And then the Spirit of God really opened my eyes and gave me grace to see how symmetrical it was. The Jews, some Jews in the Old Testament amongst the Jewish people who were the chosen culture to carry God's law until the new covenant was to come, which was already promised. God knew it was coming even if we didn't. Um, they, some of them were, were not included and they're in hell and they're going to be in hell forever because God didn't include them in, 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 his, in, his, in his kingdom that he's establishing, you know? He didn't include them. And that's why Christ in the New Testament went down and t explained it to them. But the righteousness of the law, the heart of the law, was, was revealed to those God's calling, the remnant. That's why you get these other people that are going crazy and, oh, you know, we got to do this, we got to do that. And it's like, just read the scriptures. What does it say? It says, it says um, you know, these things Christ made clean, but, but we still, but, but other than those things, we still follow the law. You know, like, um, you know, we don't have to, you know, it's not about clothing and, and, and outer appearance. We know that. So all that stuff kind of gets washed away. You know, like, you know, the Jews used to wear the tassels and they used to have the, the scripture box on their head and all this stuff. You know, it's, it's about all that stuff becomes an inward um, thing now. So the law is written on your, on your heart and your mind. You know, and, and not on the box on your head or a tattoo or something. You know, I, I wanted to tattoo my body with scriptures and do all this cool stuff to glorify God. And, and I justified it by saying, you know, whatever I do, do to the glory of God. But that's not what God's saying. He's saying, look, you know, the more you succumb and learn to love my righteousness, my judgments, my laws, and see that they don't change. They've never changed. I didn't, God didn't change them from the Old Testament to the New Testament. There's no change that happened. God's the same. How, how could there be a change? The problem is we've misunder, misunderstood. We've misinterpreted what God's heart is really saying. And the Bible says that it, it's the spirit, it's the power and the presence of God that, re, that makes the letter living. And that we saw that manifest in the physical God in the flesh removed, crucified himself, removed his spirit, and ascended to hell and, and, get to, and to heaven. And then God came back and put power, and put his, his spirit back in, his, back in the flesh. And, and, and the Bible says that if it was the spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead. You know, and, and it's, it's the power of God that raised the word from the dead, made it living. And it's the same thing in us in the physical manifestation. If we're, if we're truly seeing the heart of the author behind the words. There's a lot of people, they, they read the Bible like an academic, and I see them all over YouTube, like, slamming each other. And you know what? At the same time, uh, it, what it does is it puts, a, um, it puts a negative slant on people like myself and other people who are seeing the truth and who are trying to expose rebukes or heresies by rebuke and which is which is part of exhortation exhortation if you study in the greek it means to encourage and rebuke you know only a fool hates correction why are we why are we you know we should love the judgments of god like david said he loved them because we're in a state of total and utter depravity we need a savior if you start to think that you're a good person and that you don't need correction you've missed the boat you know you, all of us need a uh, rebuke. We're, we're, we're wayward children. We will always go the wrong way. That's why God chooses. He chooses. He gives grace. If He doesn't give you grace, then how can you be saved? Do you understand? 